So what were the big ideas that I think um, Tim drew out of us? One is that this takes work. We cannot allow other people to vote. We cannot allow other people to decide what our constitution should look like in the 21st century, either dead or alive. There's no magic to keeping the constitution exactly the way it is, that we have agency and that agency demands that we think. One of the things we didn't touch on as much as I would have liked in the time we had is Tim makes the really good point that we've gotten dumber and duller because we're so addicted to social media that we're passive. Um, everyone has their head in their phone and they don't have time to read. They don't have time to engage. They don't have time to think. And this is a recipe for authoritarianism. Authoritarians love it when you're out to lunch, when you're busy with something else, when you're amusing yourself with nonsense. So I think one of the lessons is freedom takes work, freedom takes imagination, freedom takes personal responsibility. I think another interesting point that he makes, again, that's extremely relevant to where we are now, is that we need to start thinking not of smaller or bigger government, government's good, government's bad, but what is government doing? Is it doing the things that we want? And we see that Donald Trump and the MAGA folks, their goal is to discredit all of government by saying it, it's always a negative, it never works, they're not supplying you with hurricane relief, they're not telling you the truth about all these other things. That is a noxious recipe. First of all, it's attacking objective reality. And secondly, it's telling you that if you just get rid of all this government regulation, you'll be free. No, he'll be freer, but the rest of us will be sicker, more endangered, um, dumber, um, less mobile, and a whole bunch of other negative things. So when you hear people bemoaning not only a specific fault of government, which we should, government is there to be critiqued, and that's part of what we do as a free people, is look at it, analyze it, improve it. But if you're making an argument that government is inherently bad, that we have to completely change the entire map, be wary because those people may be looking to advance their own freedom, but not yours, because we actually do need government. And it's a terrible idea to think we should go back in history, whether it's Clarence Thomas saying we should consider women's rights in the 19th century when the 14th Amendment was passed and women were essentially still property in most of America. It's a mistake to go backwards and say we should go back to the pre-New Deal state. What, we were freer when we had child poverty? We were freer when people were living in poverty? I don't think so. And of course, their big one is we were freer when we were whiter and more Christian. Really? Really? Well, first of all, you're excluding other people from enjoying freedom, which is part of the American dream. You're saying it's only for us. No one else can possess it, which is wrong and selfish. And secondly, you deny all of the contributions to freedom that immigrants have made whether it's the internet, whether it's music that you enjoy, whether it's scientific advances, all of these things that immigrants have contributed have made improvements in our lives, have made us freer, smarter, more mobile, more healthy. And excluding them makes us less free. So you begin to see the pattern of the lies and of the destructiveness of a movement like MAGA, which seeks to obliterate truth, which seeks to turn people against one another and against the very idea of government. And it's, a po it's important, as Kamala Harris has done, to say, no, we need a new way forward. The future, not the past, is going to determine what kind of people we are. Yes, we want to import our values. We want to 
have our lessons from history. We want to have certain constitutional rights and structures, but we don't have to settle for less. We can ask more of ourselves and more of government. And I think put in that way, you can understand how an election can be joyous because it's an opportunity to say, here it is. Here's our chance to do something different. Here's our chance to determine our future. And that's really what democracy offers us. So quite a conversation with Tim, and I invite you to let your friends and relations know if you like this program, you can click right there to subscribe, and you and your friends can find us wherever you get your podcasts. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.